This lesson deals with a non-inverting amplifier. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 8 starting on page 6. Given this ideal op amp with three resistors, R1, R2, and R sub L, and an input V1, can you figure out what the value of V2 is in terms of V1 and the resistors that are in the circuit? Now let's redraw the circuit with just one connection to ground, and let's label the conditions on the op amp. So no current coming in, no current coming out. I do have feedback from the output to one or both of the terminals. So the voltage across here is forced to shrink to zero. That's shown on the bottom of the page. So no current in, no current out, no voltage across the terminals of the op amp. Let me assign a current in the resistors. I'll, I'll call this I2 for R2 and I1 for R1. You can pick any direction, but once you pick it, we're just going to stick with it. And I'll label this voltage across R1 as V sub X. Let's do Kirchhoff's current law at this node. The current that enters is I2 plus zero, and what leaves is I1. I1 is equal to I2. Now, since I have the same current, then I could apply voltage divider rule with an input of V2 and an output of V sub X. So V sub X is V2 times R1 over R1 plus R2. Now, what's the voltage V sub X in terms of the input? Well, let's just do Kirchhoff's voltage law around this loop. The rise in voltage is V1, the drop is zero, the drop is V sub X. V1 equals V sub X. So now I have V1, which is the input in terms of the output V2. So let's just solve this. Take the reciprocal of this on the other side of the equation. So it'll be R1 plus R2 over R1 times V1. Or you could divide through by R1 and have 1 plus R2 over R1. Here too, the output is independent of R sub L, provided it's not a short circuit. The inverting amplifier, as well as a non-inverting amplifier, are very commonly used in audio applications, so it's not unusual to see these drawn different ways. For the non-inverting amplifier, it's possible to redraw this with the minus terminal on the top for the triangle symbol of the op amp. So here's the minus and the plus. Now from the plus terminal to ground is V1. From the minus terminal back to the output is R2. And from the minus terminal to ground is the resistor R1. This picture is identical in function to this picture and just drawn differently. Let's put some numbers in and see what happens with our output given an input. Suppose that R1 is 10K, R2 is 20K, we're using plus and minus 15 volt power supplies. And now our input is a 4 volt sine wave at 2 kilohertz. I would expect the output to be 1 plus 20K over 10K times my input. That would be 3 times this which will change the amplitude to 12. We keep the frequency at two kilohertz. So here's a graph which you would see in lab. So the input's gonna go up from zero to four volts, back down to minus four, and so on repeat itself. The period is one over two K, and that's half a millisecond. When the input hits four, the output hits three times bigger, which would be 12. When it hits minus four, minus 12. This is why it's called a non-inverting amplifier. The output has the same phase relationship as the input. Now, just like the inverting amplifier, everything works fine, provided that you don't exceed the value of the power supply. If you do, the output will clip off at about the power supply value. And this is how a non-inverting amplifier works.